Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and another episode of my Battle Report pre-series. So this is video three. Um, I want to go through a few things here before we get started on this scenario. So the first thing I want to do is um, talk about the types of playthroughs. I've had a, a few questions about um, what type of, uh, like if you're going to be a player in the game, what type of game, like do you have to have Rogue Tech to play? And the answer is no. Uh, there's been a few questions about what people could run um, in their own individual playthrough to become part of the campaign. And, you know, there's been a few really good points. So originally I had Rogue Tech and I had um, the regular Battle Tech and I had, you know, like Tabletop or something like that or, or something else, right? Um, those are still viable. So I think if you have Rogue Tech, doesn't matter what version, I think you could like you definitely can be included if you have the regular battle tech you can definitely be included if you want to use battle tech advanced too if you prefer that um then that's fine as well like i, I think any any uh mod or the any part of the original game of battle tech um i think is fine i think any of those would work really well and then i had a question about about uh mech warrior 5 uh, now i've seen a little bit of gameplay from mech warrior 5 but i'm not all that familiar with it so i don't know um, the difficulty settings for it. Some, some, someone has said that it's already got kind of like a skull rating difficulty setting for it. Um, I'm going to say yes to it at the start. Um, but if it looks like, like the person, whoever, like whoever, whoever's playing, um, MechWarrior 5 is tipping the scales one way or another, um, then I may have to disclude it, but for now we'll include it because I think anything related to Battletech should work. Like I even said, Tabletop, we can figure out a skull rating for Tabletop. That's fine, just submit the battle report and we'll figure out what it is, right? So I think that's, you know, I think anything related to Battletech would probably work, except for uh, Mech Warrior Online, um, because that is just so random that there's no way to, um, for, at least from the matches that I've seen, there's no way to really judge what's what in that. So yeah, we'll leave that one out. Okay, I've had a couple of people ask too about uh, recording your games, if you want to record the game and post it. Um, so the way I record is I just use GeForce Experience um, because I'm using a GeForce card. So, you know, um, just basically go into recording mode. I don't have a camera. I got a microphone and everything, right? And then in settings, you just tell it how you want to do it. So, you know, recording where it's going to be going. Um, and where is it here? Um, you know, your audio, how you're, like, so, like, I, I capture my sound, like, my system sound and my voice sound separately, and then if you want to do, uh, like, video capture, how you want to capture it, if you're going to have instant replay, whatever, right? So I just capture, you know, 60 frames per second, I've got a custom setting that I do, I'm catch capturing at 65 megabits per second. Now, you may not have the same, you know, um, video, well, a uh, half-decent video card in order to do this, or your hard drive, like if you're running the game off of the hard drive you're going to be recording to, then this will change. I've got an SSD that I'm, like a secondary SSD that I'm recording to, and I'm playing the game off of an SSD, like a separate drive. So for me, playing back and recording is relatively easy. Um, if you're doing it this way, my my, salute, my uh, suggestion would be to test it a few times and raise or lower the bit rate. The bitrate basically is telling you how how much quality per frame it's going to put in. So how many bit like megabits per second, so how many thousands of bits per second it's going to put into it, right? So um, so yeah, so that's all it is. You can lower your frame rate too, so you don't have to capture in 60p. You can capture in like 30 or whatever, or you know 24. Um, 24 I think is probably the lowest frame rate you'd want to go, but you can go lower. You can go 20. It just makes it a little little bit jittery. Um, so there's that option or to get out of here you can go and go to um obs studio so most of the, i think most of the gamers at least the ones that i've seen use obs studio i've never tried it myself um but it's free you just go ahead and just go to obs obsproject.com uh, and you can download it um and just mess around with it um i'm, I'm assuming you can record your same as mine you, rec you can record your um, gameplay audio and your voice audio separately and I don't know I think it might have an editor built in I'm not sure like, like I use Adobe Premiere Pro for my editing so um, like I, I 
I, unfortunately, this is what I do for a living, so I don't really know a lot about, like, I don't want to call it lower end software, but like software, like consumer end software. Um, so yeah, I don't really know too much about this, but it's pretty simple. You can just click on Windows here, or go to the download tab, opens up a new window, uh, and then you can go ahead and just download it and install it. Um, like I said, most of the people, like a lot of the people that I've seen on online that record use OBS Studio. Um, so as far as it, it's safe, you know, to download, safe to install, safe to use. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't take our responsibility for any damage you do, you do to your computer downloading and installing this. Like I said, I don't have it personally myself, so I, I can't comment on what it'll do, how fast it is, how much drive space you'll need, uh, whether you need assist, like your game on one drive and a recording on another. Um, that to me is really only makes sense if you're going to record, make sure you're recording it on the drive that you're not playing off of. That way you're not trying to write files and read files at the same time. If you have an SSD, make sure you're recording to the SSD. It's a little faster. Um, playing back off of, like playing a game off of an SSD is fast, but I think if you're going to record and you've got one SSD and one non-SSD, play the game off the non-SSD and record on the SSD. Uh, just allows, allows you to record bigger files, like a, like a higher bitrate files, more better quality files, uh, faster and not interrupt your gameplay. Uh, that's just my suggestion. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's one way you can record the videos. It's not mandatory. You don't have to record videos to be part of the campaign. It's like battle reports and just reporting on Discord is, is perfectly fine. But if, like I said uh, in the previous videos, if you do record them, I will put a link in the description for the battle report video. So like if we play for the week, right, then I get everything in on Sunday night, Monday. Um, when I do the battle report video and it comes out, look down in the description below and like there'll be links on the map to whose videos are posted and you can go down in the description and just actually watch the battles so you can see how they play out which is I think kind of a cool way of doing it because then you know it's just like everybody contributing and we get to watch a bunch of uh, bunch of cool battle tech videos so yeah if you want to do it great if you don't you don't have to um, now for as far as timelines go I'm, I've I'm trying to get a time frame down so when, when we can get started. So, but a bunch of stuff has to happen before that. So my time frame, my time frame is is to get a bunch of stuff done by next Friday. So this is the I'm recording this on the 29th, most likely to be posted on the 29th, and go up on the 29th unless I have problems with my um, um, compressions on YouTube because I've been getting problems with them processing my videos like three videos in the past week taken way longer than they should to process and I've had to actually go in and clip the end of them like the last few seconds uh, and then have it reprocess the video in order to, in order for it to finish the HD processing on me to get it posted so that's why some of my videos have been behind but yeah so that being said um, I want to get everyone's in info in by next Friday so we know what we're doing if if people need a little more time to get their lances ready to go, uh, I can certainly pad it out. Um, and then probably what, what I'm planning on doing is when we start the campaign, we will start it on a Wednesday. So Wednesday will be the beginning of the fighting. And then we're going to do what's like, I think we're going to go turns. I think turns should be one real life week. That way it gives play people uh, a time to play, right? So. The, um, the turn will start on a Wednesday, right? A Wednesday for us. And then it will go to a Sunday. And that's the time you have to play your matches in. If you're playing for more than, like if you're playing for yourself and like maybe somebody else, um, then yes. So uh, your matches, the reports need to be in by the Sunday night. And then I'll take Monday to compile them and Tuesday to do a video. And then that'll get posted probably Wednesday. Um, and then Wednesday, you'll see the situation report for that turn, what happened, and where people have moved. And then you go again for the next week. So that's what it'll be. You'll have like five days um, to run your lance, and then a couple of days for reporting and updates, and then we'll go back into it again. So I think that's what the cycle will be. If we find that's too slow, like if everybody's like fine and they can do more than one match um, a week, then 
we can certainly work on getting that updated. Um, it just means I think the battle report video that I do, um, I don't think can be as detailed. Because if I have to do more of them, it's gonna it might become an issue. Um, but I got to figure out a way to to do the map so it's going to be easy. This is pretty simple here. Um, when we do a bigger campaign, I'll probably have a cork board that I'm going to throw up. I'm going to print this out, do a cork board, and then I'll be able to move stuff around. Um, and I'll have better control of it that way. Because working in After Effects like this, it's a little little cumbersome. Um, especially if you're trying to figure out a lot of things. But um, when I do the actual video video part, I'll probably use this. Um, so I want, I think in order to play the game, because in order to get this going and have it work and start to run like clockwork, I think people need to use Discord. So um, if you haven't got, if you don't have Discord, um, it's just a free download. Um, once you get it downloaded and installed, you can run it in a browser. Uh, so Discord will run in a browser if we go to Rogue Tech here. Um, you can put a bookmark for it, run it in a, any browser, right? So this takes me into the Rogue Tech or into Discord, which is basically the same as the standalone. So that's how I usually check out what version of Rogue Tech is the most updated. Um, so I go, I usually use the browser for that, but you can you can just quick quickly click on whatever channels you've got like have here and quickly go to the different channels and go through and read them. You can also get the standalone, which is what I've got here open in the background. Um, and it's, you know, it sends you notifications all the time if anybody's updated any of the channels here. Uh, you'll get a noti notification for stuff. Um, and you, as you can see, people have already been posting and, and been going through. But I think we're going to have to make sure if you're going to be a player, you got to be on Discord for reporting and everything because um, I, I think in order to be able to stay organized and stay on top of things, um, it's going to have to be that way. Now, I've added a couple of extra channels on here. Uh, I'll be, be going through and cleaning these up a little bit. I think once we get started, um, we'll find out what we need as we're going along. Um, actually, let's just minimize this so it's not confusing. But yeah, as we go along, uh, we'll find out what we need. So right now, um, I've got the, it's like the, so the campaign is the battle for Lassa. So the first, the first uh, uh, name, Lassa, basically lets you know it's the campaign name. And this is the starting lances, so people have been posting what their starting lances are. Some people have already gone through their first um, six months of their playthrough and they're ready to go. So they've been posting starting lances here, which I think is cool. So if you've got suggestions for people, they can, you know, you can put suggestions on, or you can see what other people are running here. So they've been, uh, like Midnight here has kind of posted his lance and what he's got running, um, which is kind of cool because it lets everyone know and it also lets me know what the lance is and what it, what it, the possibility for like its capabilities. So it'll help me balance out some encounters. So um, if everyone's running heavy mechs, and I can you know I can make the encounters heavier. If everyone's like in medium or light range, then I can make them lighter. So I'm not going to like force people to take three or four skull missions if you're running a light lance. You know what I mean? It's like it's going to be up to you, and everything will be balanced for your play, which I think. It's really the only way that this is going to work. Um, so I'm going to create another channel here um, real quick. And then we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call it Lassa, and I'm going to call it Players. Okay, and we're going to create the channel now. And for the people who are playing on this campaign, I want you to come in, just type in what your name is. So for me, it's just like, a you know, Attack and destroy, Amberzand. Make sure I haven't spelled my name wrong, because of course I have, with two T's. Um, so yeah, you're just gonna throw your name in, and then hyphen, and then whether you're a player or not. And then, um, if you're not a player, then type uh, then what you'll do is you put your name in and then you'll say you'll you can type in need player and then for instance I'll um, yeah so if you if you if you need a player because you can't run your own lance type in your name and then need player or or needs player or or needs proxy player or something like that just so that I know that you need somebody to be hooked up with um, if you're a player you put your name the fact that you're a player and I'm also going to be running proxy for 
this uh, and it's no space running a proxy for fists of Dorn. now if you want to notify them or whatever you can just put an add symbol in front of this um, so you know it brings up the name here so that's me running a proxy for fists of Dorn. right so that's how we're going to do our start that way I can figure out who's all playing if you're running a proxy for somebody now if you're a player you don't have to run a proxy for somebody else that's fine I, I'm not going to force anybody and we'll try and match up people um, as best we can I know there's been a couple people that have expressed interest of in running proxies for other people like running a lance for them if they can't run their own um, and some people have, have said they might not be able to run their lance and, and discovered that they were able to install Rotec and get it going that's great too so we're going to get everybody down on here and it needs to be in by next Friday um, just so we can have the starting lance I'll lock it off on Friday and these are the people we'll start with and run through the first scenario that doesn't mean you can't join later on once we're just going to run the first scenario I want to get all the bugs out in the first first this first like small scenario iron out all the bugs and then after that we're going to do a bigger one um, so yeah so then once you're done you just hit enter and it'll enter it in here so we need to we need to get everybody who's going to be a player to come here and basically get in and drop your name in um, and like I said just separate it with hyphens if you're a player or not a player whatever and then if you're running a proxy for somebody put who it is so that way I can figure out who's playing who's a proxy and then I can get a, a total number of lances that are going to be running um, so yeah that's the goal for that and then uh, Lance rules for setup people have been asking me questions about what lances they can run what what is restricted and what isn't um, so for as far as gear goes as far as what kind of mechs you can feel at the start the rules for uh, the number of mechs so if you want to go ahead and buy the Argo uh, the sorry the uh, secondary drop leopard and drop more than four mechs at a time um, and I'm saying yes to all those I think whatever you can do in the first six months is completely up to you um, just remember you got to hit your financial report right so I am allowing um, sort of free a free turn like for those people who are going to be out of money and need to run a um, a cash grab to be able to make their financial report I am allowing a free run but anything from that needs to be sold so you take maximum cash and any salvage that you get just gets sold so you make the money yes your guys get a little bit of experience and that's fine um, but you make your money and then that's it so and I would uh, I would suggest doing like half or one skull missions take the maximum amount of sea bills so you can make your financial reports so and as the campaign goes on like I mean that that'll be a request I think if you need to do that or I mean I I don't know I think people if you're as long as people are honest and they're not they're not overplaying when they shouldn't be um, then I think what we can do and I think most people are I think everyone will be fine here but um, yeah so if you need it just go ahead and run and get your uh, get your C bills as we're playing I think that's fine uh, but like I said Lance rules for startup there is no real Lance rules um, I think uh, either starting with a Steiner or a mercenary or a pirate company something like that uh, for the first start will be fine um, and I think that's about it for this particular video um, I don't have much else in way of requests uh, when the campaign starts I'm gonna have a video that's going to explain what all this stuff means um, and you know the rules of your initial engagement and all that you guys will have uh, I don't know X number of days I gotta figure two when people are on um, so maybe it'll be the first like I'll introduce the video you guys can spend a week planning um, I'll create a channel for that you guys can plan what you want to do um, I'll introduce what all the icons mean um, how to do your report at the end of the first battle um, where to report it to how the movements going to work um, how many hexes you can move all that kind of stuff um, and you know um, the nature of hidden enemies what all the icons mean um, in the way of what kind of missions you can take based on what the icons are if you're facing certain enemies um, and yeah we'll just go through all that with the uh, the um, 
the uh, uh, what do you want to call it? the victory terms are. So what you need to do to to achieve victory in this match, uh, how long it will take, um, all that kind of stuff. So that'll be the next video, uh, basically laying out all the plans for how the scenario is going to run and get going. But please get to, get onto Discord uh, and check it regularly because I'll probably be updating it with new channels. Um, if there's anything that's like major that needs to go on there. Um, I'll probably do another video and just post it and let you guys know. But like I said, get on Discord if you're going to play and make sure you enter it into this channel. Um, and just so I know who's all going to be playing and then uh, we'll go from there. Um, I'll probably be, probably be requesting um, to at least somebody, like people posting at some point what their logos will be for each player. Um, so, you know, uh, what your company symbol is going to be because then I can put that on the map board um, for each person so you can at least identify where you are um, like relatively easily and I'm working on how we're going to do it if we got more than one group stacked in one hex how we're going to at least show everybody that that's there um, yeah and uh, I'm going to end this video here I hope I didn't miss anything uh, if if you have any questions please drop the questions in the comment section down below or go over on the discord um, if you got any questions uh, you can just probably drop into the current campaign here and throw your questions in. Um, and uh, like I go through them all. I do read them all. Um, I don't have it open all day long, but I do try and check it at, at night and stuff and whenever I can during the day and, and post as much as I can. Um, yeah, so uh, that'll be the end for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please put the comments in the comment section down below. Till next time, we'll see you all later.